Hello and welcome to the Junkyard Love Podcast. Welcome to the Junkyard Love Podcast. I hope y'all are very well. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're loving yourself. I hope you're learning about yourself. I hope you're educating yourself about yourself. I hope you're taking a look at your thoughts. I hope you're taking a look at your mind. I hope you're listening to your body. I hope you're looking at your situations and your life in a holistic sense. And also, I hope that you check out today's recommendation, which is Closer to Truth on YouTube. It's just a YouTube channel, Closer to Truth. Lawrence Krauss is the guy's name. He just kind of, so he travels around um, asking like existential questions to, you know, neuroscientists and and big time meditators and um, biologists and people who attend like all these consciousness conferences and super fascinating, great stuff. Really nice scenic. Um, if you enjoy podcasts, it's, it's just people sitting there, but they have they do it outdoors in beautiful places, so it just adds this extra aesthetic. Um, the camera is always panning. I don't know, it's just great. Closer to truth. If you enjoy um, the uh, the essence of the upcoming conversation, um, the exploration of consciousness and the cosmos and mathematics and these sorts of things, philosophizing life. Check that out. Closer Truth on YouTube. Let's get rolling with the episode. Please take care of yourself. Yeah, just hit record, man. It's, it's not like we're trying to prove any points and be like, this is exactly what we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. We're just conversating. My name's Jake with the Junkyard Love Podcast. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Carry it on. All righty. Uh, what's going on, guys? Uh, Brandon Cruz with Wild Productions. Again, to see Jake for the first time in months and... I gotta say, it is a serious, serious pleasure. Absolutely. Um, I absolutely love my fiance and my roommates, but guy time is like yeah. much needed. Yes. Much needed. Yeah, bro time. I, I mean, really just any interaction with friends. It's <laughs> any like, interaction at all. Yeah. Just people. <laughs> I mean, I, do, I talk to myself a fucking lot, and at some point it's like, I, I need somebody to bounce this stuff off of, you know? Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's weird when you start to like actually think of your coworkers as like I didn't really like them when I was like <laughs> kind of seeing them every day, but now I kind of yeah I kind of miss you, kind of annoying me a little bit. Right. <laughs> yeah. like, Terry, he's such a dick, but I miss that dick, dude. I would you just talk some shit to me right now and just yeah. let me scoff and walk away? <laughs> <laughs> Will somebody give me what Terry gives me at work every day? Yeah. I need put that a stress. wig on. Put I'm a wig addicted. on and act act for me (laughs) you like get get mad at lacy you're like you've been so nice to me it's driving me through the roof yeah seriously you reenact everyone that i'm with at work so i feel like i have purpose again i i mean i could imagine that like if there are a house full of actors somewhere probably in california (laughs) just like having a bunch of props in sets and just being really bored their their days are probably like insane like they probably wake up as like Somebody's just like, I'm a cowboy today. And Bro, and you just, just like, if you're an actor fuck? too, you just play along yeah, with it. Yeah, you just playing along. Yes, you're like, oh and shit, this is a rodeo right now. And Yo, that would be a fun way of life. Like live as if you're in a sitcom kind of. I don't get why. Oh, sorry. I don't get why a you lot. You can move that thing all you want, bro. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to manhandle it. Twist it a little bit right there. I think twist that it. sounds nice. Pop it. Oh. <laughs> Take that's it. a good game right there i actually just found that in my house as we're like doing our little spring cleaning and you're not um, allowed to be contacting other people and touching them but you're just handing them an object <laughs> now you bop it i, I had the funniest just hold your I, breath i had the funniest idea of like a video where because 420 had passed well obviously while quarantine's going on and i could imagine like like some people meeting their friends and like kind of breaking the quarantine thing but Mm -hmm. they're still kind of sketchy about coronavirus so Mm -hmm. they decide like to load a bowl and they like hand it off and they're like you know take a hit it's 420 (laughs) blah 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 and they take a hit and they're like oh shit actually 
Um, I don't want to get corona, so you gotta kind of gotta clear that whole bong yourself. Oh. And, <laughs> or like they like have like a massive like cross joint or something, right. and they're like, ah, oh, f- I forgot. Like that's all you, man. You have to, and you're just know. like a lightweight, oh, and you're just no. like, no. And like it, in the TV show, that's no. like where like the vision gets all like, <laughs> interdimensional. And yeah. like, Whoa. I feel and that. And like the laughs are like a ha 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 ha. Like, oh, so fuck much did I sign up for? It's like when people talk about, like, yeah, like uh, like smoking weed before the savage people. Are like, bro, I smoked weed. I smoked Snoop Dogg's weed, and I fucking died. Like, you, <laughs> do you ever hear that? I feel like yeah. I, there's occasionally people like Wiz Khalifa, Snoop Dogg, um, like uh, Tommy Chong or something. Mm-hmm. I think he was mentioned, like, where everybody's like, yo, I smoked with them, and it was so next level. It's not <laughs> it even, so it high. just gets to a point where it's not even fun. It's like, it takes the whole, it's actually like, I mean, the same goes for like drinking with friends that like get really messed up or Mm -hmm. like, you know, go to the bar and they're just getting shit faced. You're just like, that's not me. Like, that's just, that's a whole nother level where I just, I know I'm not going to feel good. Yeah, (laughs) dude, there's once in a while, I feel like the last... I don't know. I really never like to get fucked up. Like there's like once in a while where you give it to yourself and you prep for it almost. Like it's like the older you you get, you're like, all right, bro, I've been, I've been just taking Metamucil every day. I've been drinking a gallon and a half of water (laughs) because I know that I'm going to have to take three days off work or whatever. I stretched my stomach today to make sure I had enough room to, you know, fit all these shots in and yeah, you prep (laughs) for it. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, so, um, I wanted to, so we're kind of talking about like the vibe um, of the coronavirus. So mm-hmm. like, but I, originally I was, it, it's so, it's such an interesting thing because things are, you know, non-linear and linear mm-hmm. a lot of times in how th- there's such thing as kind of like a vibe or like how things perceived. So like a lot of the like deplatforming is like stuff that happened in like 1995. That mm-hmm. is like, it was not offensive back then mm-hmm. that a comedian said, say, and then they bring it into the year 2020 and they're like, this is so offensive. And it's like, no, the vibe, like the way our understanding as a society of how things work has changed since then. Mm-hmm. So you can't like back then it wasn't insane for this person to say that, whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, I was comparing that to the, let's say March for my area, for our area. I feel like it was like March 14th was like, everybody's still going out. Everybody's still like having a beer. We're like, yeah, the coronavirus exists. Like, I don't know what's going on with it. It seems crazy. Like, oh, there's a couple cases here, but, like, it seems like it's mostly in China or whatever. Like, it's, like, you're almost mm-hmm. ignoring it, and then all of a sudden it's, like, I don't know if it was news cycles or just, like, everybody, like, took it seriously or there was, like, some sort of news cycle or news particularly story, particular story. But uh, March 14th to March, like, 16th was just shut down the whole. Oh, like, yeah. it was, like, off. So it's really interesting to see. So just using that example, like, how quickly things change um, and then thinking, like, so two weeks ago, like I wouldn't, and I wasn't, this is the first time that I've had somebody, I mean, I had my friend Eric for a podcast outside and it was like, I feel like I kind of addressed it, but I wasn't fully present. I was like nervous about it. I was thinking about the virus. I was mm-hmm. thinking about how close we should be getting, like all those sort of things. But now the vibe is, is, and I wish I had a more intellectual word to use yeah. the vibe. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. But, um, it's, it's just lifted. Like, it's like, like there's, there's this fuck it attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of people who have the whole time been like, I don't believe any of it. Like, (laughs) and then there's, but now there's, there's just this like, well, we've got to carry on. Like we need each other. We Mm -hmm. need human interaction. Like, um, so I feel like for me, and it feels weird to talk about, like, I feel like I'm going to like get in trouble or people are going to like judge me or it's, it's hard to have my own opinion on this, Mm -hmm. which is another weird, weird thing that I'm noticing. That's like, everybody kind of feels like they don't really want to unless they're one of the people who are really loud and like expressing it's not fucking real. Mm -hmm. A lot of of the other people are like, I don't know. Like, I just want to like respect it and like, let's just wait it out. Um, But so, so where I feel on it is I have like select people that I'm going to now see. Mm -hmm. Um, I have like a few people who I know aren't in contact with a shitload of other people. Um, As far as the podcast goes, I'm going to just, kind of make it to where it's a beeline into the door like we try not to touch shit too much Mm -hmm. we try to just like stay smart about it yeah like so i'm trying to like tiptoe into it um i'm not trying to like just 
well i mean obviously i'm not trying to break the fucking law for sure like mm-hmm. so I, I don't know what area i fall in like i'm not specifically trying to like just follow that i'm just trying to be intelligible about the whole thing mm-hmm. um trying to i'm trying to in in back to the vibes just what i, I just want to meet there like i want to have the conversations at the time where the vibe is like like where the like what do we what do we think about it like we don't have to like act like we're not like still a little nervous still Mm -hmm. a little scared we don't have to act like we're like we have to go back to work we're exactly where we are so Mm -hmm. like where we are on today what's what's the date may 13th 12th 11th 10th may 13th 13th. and i'll try to post this one in a more timely manner than i normally do um but uh it's the, the vibe is we've chosen a few friends a few people to see and and be around um and I'm kind of curious for, for what comes next. Where, where, where is where is your vibe and what's your perspective on like the vibe kind of situation that I was talking about? And if you have a better word than vibe, please. I love vibe. Vibe okay. is like my favorite word. So I'm like <laughs> vibing out. Um, it's just weird because there's so many different variables to what is going on. And the amount of confusion and the decisions, decisions in confusion uh stem from all the way from the top like every day it seems like the people who are running this country tell us something and then the next day it's something else and then you know it was don't ever wear a mask because you could be breathing in the bacteria now it's always wear your mask you know Mm -hmm. and it's this constant influx of misinformation and information and it it not necessarily can be their fault but it also can be their fault because it's like you're telling some people to do something and then telling them to do something else. And half those people are like, well, fuck you guys. Like you're lying to me. Like who am I to trust if these people are telling me what to do and Mm -hmm. they're wrong and my people are dying. And then you got other people that are just like scared because they have no idea what to do. They're just like, I'm just going to sit inside and just wait this thing out. Then you got people who just like completely don't believe in it and don't care Mm -hmm. and then you got like the the people who are just like kind of like you and i ish where we're like trying to test our foot in the water and like see if like trying to hit there's a smart i think we do need to start implementing smart ways to interact with each other like we're both young i don't leave the house hardly ever um and i social distance from so many people Mm -hmm. i don't go and go to the store and go do this and Mm -hmm. go see family and all that stuff like Mm -hmm. we keep our distance so i feel like my for myself i'm a safe bet to hang out with Mm -hmm. the interactions aren't going to spread and that's another thing is the people that don't believe that this disease exists it is a very real and physical disease it actually exists it's a Mm -hmm. it's something that my roommate's a nurse she's seen people die from it Mm -hmm. so we don't know i mean we know as much as we can know about it but there's there's a lot that we don't know about so it's we're we're just kind of clueless together is what it is like it like i i don't know i i don't personally i've never been someone who like needs to point blame i suppose Mm -hmm. but blame is kind of a way you know when you can find somebody who is who is who you could point a finger at and kind of consume your time talking about like, Oh, it's these people's fault or this mm-hmm. person could have done better. Um, or blame is a place of comfort, like for our, you yep. know, um, you know, more primitive mind. Like it's, it's like, like some people do not like maintaining the unknowing, which I, let's say nobody does. Like nobody likes to, to, to not know what's going to come next. Like, mm-hmm. You know, we're all kind of in this position of like, what the fuck is going to happen? Like, there's what's a couple going people on? I know that are, are completely like, I'm up for the randomness, but for, right. the, for the yeah. vast majority of people, yeah. we, we all need a story <laughs> to stick to, man. Yeah. And it's it's you know, I I've you know, and I've had to remember that with myself, but I've also had to have patience with myself when I'm interacting with other people because because I have to remember like, this person's just scared. They're just scared. That's the root of this. Mm-hmm. They're scared just as much as I am. You know, maybe more, maybe less. What, whatever. Like they're they they have different information. Maybe they have the same information. Um, they have different life experiences. So this makes them a little more unsettled. Like you know, someone who has been poor as a kid, 
um, they're a little more stressed out about uh, maybe going hungry again mm-hmm. than someone who's never like felt that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody has different life experiences. We're all at a different level. And what really, you know, honestly pisses me off is that we have a WWE fucking sideshow going on for our political shit. No, yeah. I'm not trying to dive into political stuff, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. just like, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, you know, I, I see, I work, I work audio work for like student organizations. And um, when it was first started up in Seattle, I was working for an organization and there was kids in the room that were under 18 and their framing of questions to the adults in the room was, they're, they're terrified, man. Like they don't know. Mm-hmm. They should be able to look to somebody at a podium, not to lie to them because nowadays we're fucking smart. You can't just be like, everything's going to be fine if you just believe. Like there needs to be explanations. These kids are smart. They understand what's going on. You can't just bullshit them. But I, I don't know. I, to me, I don't know, man. We just need somebody who is a leader. We need um, people who are leaders. We need, you know, this is where the the American is taught to look up to the president in, in this way. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying this is like he signs this and this is his absolute duty, but I'm just saying that's what happens. Mm-hmm. Like, as a kid, you should be able to look up to the leader and he kind of gives you some answers that aren't bullshit. He kind of tells you like, hey, you know, we don't know fully. That's just the mm-hmm. truth. And we're really trying our best to figure it. Like, he he helps comfort you. Like when Mm -hmm. I was at this conference, these kids were asking the adults, like I just was in the room hearing it and they're, they're terrified and it pisses me off. And I wish that we had adults in the fucking room Mm -hmm. is is, that's what I'm going to summarize. I I wish that we had adults in the room for our political situation. Like, like these people, there's, there's other people that are suffering besides the ones who are pissed about suffering. Like, like the, the, I, I just, there's young kids who are looking up to older people for answers. I'm sure of it. And the older people are just acting out ridiculous shit. Well, you have the media notoriously now is, is being l- labeled as a like rage bait, clickbait sort of uh, company that is just trying to entice the president, you know, politicians, uh, forcing a narrative and just kind of extracting as much of whatever they're trying to extract from you know confrontation conflict um fear into the american people's eyes whatever the case may be excuse me that's going on you're getting a reaction from a president that is more than willing to uh play the game you know, with these reporters, with all this stuff. And meanwhile, like you said, you have people that are seriously worried. Like, my kids don't eat because I don't make enough. I work two jobs. I don't make enough to feed my kids. They usually eat at school. Like, mm-hmm. I need to know what's going on For sure. so that they can then begin to eat again. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying my best. It might not be like that in every situation. Sometimes there might be an abusive father. Or mm-hmm. There might be some crazy situations going on. But there are people struggling right now. And we need a serious, serious leader. We need a person who is a person, you know. For the longest time, I can't, I can't even think of, besides like maybe Obama and Bits, like where I felt where I wasn't, watching a robot talk you know mm-hmm. that that speech of i will do this for you guys mm-hmm. and you will be happy yeah. american you're saying you're... like what they said is good to say rather than like speaking like yeah creating new words with your mouth as a human that move and advance us forward as humanity and right? and it, people know bullshit like there are so many of us in the world now there the internet is full of just information and you can't escape it by having a certain cadence of talking and tone of voice and things like that Mm -hmm. it's we literally can see and feel emotion like humans see and feel emotion like we're supposed to do you need to be a man you need to be a person in charge a, a leader in a community you need to be the fucking king of a tribe you need to literally take on this and be like hey mm-hmm. this is tough we're gonna get through this 
we're doing everything we can mm -hmm. like bear with us let's go i i think that i mean you know just our our particular president and it's not like just picking on trump in particular but just seeing the inability for us to actually interact so if you watch the press conferences i saw just this is a headline that i'm repeating i did not watch the whole thing so i might be speaking on my butt mm -hmm. but taking the situation to expand what my thought the the person the journalist the reporter asking him the question asked kind of like a dumb question or a framed it from a certain perspective question and mm -hmm. it pissed him off and he walked out this is what i heard yesterday um mm. uh but so what what we have is not only someone who doesn't know how to like handle those things and um a way of handling them but like the what's happening i think is outside of the words themselves like and that's what people don't understand like trump wasn't mad at exactly what this woman seems to have said it's about he knows that he knows right what what does that mean he knows it's a mm -hmm. feeling a vibe that he knows that she's actually kind of just trying to be snarky so so he gets mad and goes off and says the wrong thing mm -hmm. so it's that gotcha journaling is what they call it i think mm -hmm. but like so we're not actually on the surface we have this wwe thing happening where we're in this in the arena and there's fans cheering and we're we're using the words themselves to make headlines to sell to make these things to to make fear tactics to make a drama for people to interact with but somehow what's being unseen is is there's a lot of people should know that that reporter was also trying to get the person on the podium to react a certain way mm -hmm. and when we have these assumptions when we walk up to each other with these assumptions this is kind of something that i i've referenced to this will make sense um the the garbage analogy or like the homeless person analogy like you walk up to your grandma with open arms and you, your shoulders are back and you're you're smelling like you don't cover your nose kind of mm -hmm. but if you walk up to a homeless stranger you're not going to be like ready to hug the guy you're going to be kind of put off you don't know him he's a stranger yeah. right so your vibe when you walk up to your grandma and the vibe when you walk up to a homeless person you've never met what's happening is they're all our political system seems to be that's such a fucking broad thing a bunch of homeless people <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah no but well they're interacting at the the they're interacting at the i'm treating you as a homeless person before you even say anything mm -hmm. but they the news headlines and what they're feeding the public is the words themselves mm -hmm. so there's two things going on the same thing when you're driving down the freeway you're going 75 and you just kind of get a weird kind of feeling and you look over to your right out the window and there's a guy looking at you and he's going 76 and he's mm -hmm. passing you mm -hmm. like you sense it it's a weird we don't know we're mm -hmm. in different fucking big old metal boxes traveling down a freeway like the 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 vibe again the feeling the thing that's like really reality is like being ignored and we're just listening to the words mm -hmm. so like what needs to happen in those situations if we have leaders who are willing to like dude we need to fucking look at these things sensibly there needs to be somebody who can come in and be like trump you literally need control of your emotions right mm -hmm. like and who knew like if only it was that easy right yeah. but there needs to be some sense waking sense making or some sensible way for somebody some sort of like intelligent not just one fucking messiah person yeah like just a new way of thinking a new not a left and not a right and not anything that opposes any of those things but like hey guys our shit is so advanced at this point in the way that we're all interacting but not interacting we're all talking over each other and at each other and not and through each other in all these weird ways there needs to be some developed democracy is what it needs to be it needs right. to be developed that we're running a system that's an old system yeah. We're running on computers that are like Jesus. bricks. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we haven't changed the political system ever to evolve to what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. The presidency is not now something that one person should be tasked with responsibility for. The, the Jesus, U.S. Right? alone is massive, massive markets, massive trading massive worldwide conflicts massive everything and we're supposed to be the leaders of the world apparently we're supposed to be checking every country in the world and making sure that everyone mm -hmm. is being safe and doing the right thing and right. you know not 
making nuclear bombs and shit like that. Right. How are you not supposed to be their people. not enslaving their people? How are you supposed to have one man speak for all the actions mm -hmm. of the U.S., make decisions for all the actions mm -hmm. of the U.S.? Understandably that it's not just what he says goes, but I mean, he took out a terrorist mm -hmm. without anybody knowing just one day i just woke up and we we're like a, a, a terrorist is blowing right. up could cause a, a world war three right you know it potentially could have luckily it didn't but how is one man that gives a nod on something like that not expressed to the u.s where we are private citizens that elect public officials mm -hmm. but yet they're acting private and we're acting public. It's the it's completely switched around and mm -hmm. and and morphed to where they work in secrecy and we work right out in the open. Yeah, dude, and it's so crazy that we the way that we have formulated things is people who talk up about it are kind of like the rebels and kind of like the like the the conspiracy theorists yeah. in a way, right? Like it, like the um, like the the don't ask questions thing mm -hmm. is we're we're in a time i think that that's like boiling over like we're just we're just too fucking smart like millennials and younger yeah. let's say Do, uh, there's just a lot more information now and it's yeah. hard to ignore smart's a broad word yeah. Right? yeah it's it's just hard to ignore the fact that sorry to cut you off no um, the fact that there are no reliable information sources like right what used to be your bread and butter for information cnn msnbc whatever the case may right. be they're constantly wrong you've got independent journalists on facebook instagram uh youtube you know patreon whatever it is saying their side of the story um and i mean like most people are like scrolling on facebook and I don't know if you've seen it, but there's just constant articles of like big, bold, like headlines of like mm -hmm. U.S. Uh, confirms to possibly declare war on China. And you're just like, what the fuck? Right? Like scrolling, you're like, holy shit, are we going to war with China? Yeah. And it's like, no, it's just clickbait. But out of all the clickbait, like, I'm I'm friends with all these people and they're friends with me. So if they share it, then their friend sees it, which I see right. it again. And now I've seen the same post right. 30 times well, on my point, wall. at that point you begin to trust it too. It, in it, a way. Yeah. yeah and Maybe innately, shit to this. innately you begin to trust it. Like, fuck, if like 30 right. people right now just posted that right. we're going to war with China, maybe we would. Well, well, well that's China. how we've grown to work. We want to make sure that we're in on what's really going on. I mean, mm -hmm. it's part of our, how we formed civilizations. Mm -hmm. Like, You've got you've got a bunch of people gathering together, and like if you accidentally listen to the cuckoo guy, you're gonna die next year in mm -hmm. the winter. But if you listen to the smart guy, who other people are like, oh, okay, he seems to know what's going on. Like that, that's what like you know trust is. It's it's grown. So so let's let's talk about like let, let's branch this to truth in this situation. Let's let's go so. So I'm trying to think. So so what we know to be truth. So when we were growing up, when we were in high school, do you remember like when you were li reading like history books, for example, like I think we were talking about history books earlier, mm -hmm. like the story that you read, let's say this was written in 1940, like originally the rough draft was written in 1946 for this mm -hmm. book that we're reading in, in 2003, right? And then it's like reprinted and then finally it's released in like 1963 as the final version and then it's re re been reprinted mm -hmm. and they kind of just like retell the same stories maybe they i don't know how they do this how they make history books but I don't know. they tweak it and right we so what what happened as you well you're a few years younger than me so when i was going through school i was like we were in high school by the time phones were like pretty much everybody's got one and like we still it was like a lot of people still had to like pay for internet so you didn't really click on your internet mm -hmm. icon like you accidentally like you would try to not ever click it would on be the an accident for yeah, sure like fuck that just cost me 98 cents so but but the thing is so so the the difference in 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 our reality say when i was that age and kids now the history books 
and again, I haven't been to high school recently. I don't know what fucking history books say for sure, but uh, the history books were saying this is how it happened, and this person was in charge, and Columbus was this, and Lewis and Clark did this, and the Indians, they, they're totally fine with us being here, and we didn't kill any of them, and whatever. You know, like, mm-hmm. the history books don't tell the actual truth. Like, here's what seriously happened, because the person writing the history book is on the side that... The, 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 the side, narrative is on. Yeah, the, right. The positive narrative. Right, but the, but the thing is, like, a lot of our everything was built on that side. So, so, so the difference, the difference being, how do young kids like trust adults and trust these things that they're reading, um, in in an ever changing like like they get old. Like you, you could be in you know let's say ninth grade. And you're like your teacher is telling you about what happened with Columbus and blah blah. blah. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the same stuff, like a, a smaller, older town. Same stuff that I learned ten years ago. They haven't changed it. Let's say, and like the kid can be like, "Well, actually, I just looked on Google and I found like fifteen thousand people who actually disagree, and they said that like we actually killed all those Indians and or you know like whatever. Like here's the real story. Mm-hmm. So like I, I wonder like what's what's the boiling point of that sort of thing? Like truth. Like, like kids aren't going to trust the older people. They're going to be like, I'm not going to listen to the way that you're telling us how to, how to run. Like, like what, what if we throw What if younger kids accidentally throw out baby with the bathwater because they're like, you guys are just making up so much shit. Mm-hmm. That's biased that you don't see. I think, I think the, this position that we're in now is one of the most important positions that we could be in back then when you read a history book, that was printed and for 50 years was the premier history book of all the knowledge in the U.S. to teach all the kids was that Christopher Columbus came and shook hands with the Indians and had a turkey, you know. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. That sort of thought is now wiped away because we now know the facts and skepticism has crept its way in. If you went from a straight one fact, one thought, one way mindset to now, no, maybe it was actually kind of like this, or maybe it kind of maybe went this way and they actually slayed all the Indians and stole all the land. You're going to have conflict between both sides. You're going to have people that are strongly supportive of the old ways and strongly supportive of the new ways. That's where we're at now. We're in a mixing of knowledge of no, this is the way it is, and no, this is the way it could be or could potentially be. And I think with the amount of knowledge that is being put out right now that is so untrustworthy or it is just so hard to believe, I think that's going to breed people to go out and be like, you know what? Fuck that mainstream's not going to put out some real real news what actually went down then i will Mm -hmm. and with that comes a new breed a new generation of reporters a new generation of you know uh people who are uh insightful on certain things you know what i mean like like boxing went out of style for a while um it was a huge huge thing before um ufc came in and and kind of wiped out boxing and then boxing was like uh we kind of gotta we kind of gotta do something different but at the same time we gotta go go back to our roots because when it was dying out they they were finding out that there were they were calling fights. They were, you know, placing bets on fights for entertainment purposes to maximize revenue. You know, they were saying like, uh, we're going to let blah, blah, blah win this fight because uh, now we can have him fight this next guy. That'll be a mega fight. And then if he loses to him, then he can rematch the guy that he just lost to because they did an epic fight and it was a split decision. It was really close and people caught on to that and they were like, holy shit, like we can't trust that. That's, that's, it's set up and it looks set up and it looks fake. And so now they're like jumping back into it and they're just like, all right, this is real boxing. This is like, we're going to uh, ESPN now. Like we're not even doing a pay-per-view thing. Like, we'll do pay-per-view for the big fights, but ESPN, we'll show it to the whole world for free. Boxing is back, you know? 
I think that's the same thing if that kind of makes sense with the information era that we're going through is we're in the mud right now, but we're going to crawl out of it and we're going to get, we're going to shower off and we're going to get super clean and we're entering a new age of technology, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which can lead us into the next conversation. Bro, I was just of flirting on the link. link. <laughs> I knew you were going to Neuralink. Neuralink. So, okay, so um, fill me in, with, fill in the listener where I leave in blank. So I'm just going to quick summary. Uh, Elon Musk was just a couple of days ago on Joe Rogan. Um, essentially, he announced Neuralink, which is a microchip in your brain. And, well, not exactly a microchip in your brain, but essentially this it's within the next year for one said that will be the first one in a human skull um they drill a little thing around the side of your head and they peel back a little part of your skull there um and they put a little thing in and then it seals back over it it's kind of like a cork for mm -hmm. your brain um it's like flush back over that um and what this does is it uh i mean what it, what, what do you even say like cures it, brain diseases it cures brain diseases is like, what he claims is supposed to cure like alzheimer's so people, and dementia and, and you can walk again if you're quadriplegic and shit yep. like like literally if it's controlled through your brain you can learn how to re so what they reactivate do, yeah so so what they do I, i'm pretty sure that they use sound frequencies and I think that it's the same technology that like Nikola Tesla, like the Tesla coil. I think it's similar, like the frequencies. I'm not entirely sure. I could be talking to my butt. Somebody mm -hmm. proofread me on that, Jamie. But um, <laughs> Jamie, the like it. So it's like, I don't know how it determines like, okay, so you don't have movement of your right arm. Well, it knows, we know now where the spot in your brain is that correlates the movement of your right arm. Like, mm -hmm. so say you get in a car wreck and you hit a specific spot in your brain, they're going to be like, oh yeah, that's why your left elbow feels that, you know, mm -hmm. it's all connected. Your whole body is connected mm -hmm. to, to your, to your brain, obviously. Yeah. And you could see the lack of signals being yeah. sent, electrical signals. And so it's supposed right. to stimulate those. Yeah, it's supposed, to, it's supposed to reform signals. them, I guess. Like it reforms, I don't know, pathways is the correct word because that's like neuroplasticity, but man, I it, like it's hard to wrap my head around, but essentially we're going to have like dementia, Alzheimer's, like they that's said. That's stage one. So so if you have, so here's an example that Elon used on the podcast uh, was like it, say you have seizures and say you're about to do the thing right before like your body senses that you're about to have a seizure like so whatever things that happen in someone's brain right before they have a seizure we now we've studied that we know that we know what goes on so now we have a thing the Neuralink, that when they put it um it'll sense it'll know as soon as someone's like they're walking around they have their normal day they're, they're not any different but uh they have their brain just canceled out a seizure or something so like they're walking around and their body starts to seize or their brain starts to have that first initial thing the Neuralink sends a sound frequency or a frequency and don't quote me on the sound part that negates it or opposites mm -hmm. it or whatever mm -hmm. or forms the the whatever and it turns off the seizure so like if someone's having a stroke, bond that, yeah yeah like do this like it's just crazy that changes like everything in our world that that literally if 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 he's claiming to cure multiple multiple chronic diseases that mm -hmm. are responsible for claiming the lives of so many people you have to be one of the greatest engineers that this world has ever seen i mean um, he said that. at one point you know at right. one point in time one device can then negate all the negative effects of disease and right and that's just stage one he's just saying that you know disease and, and and curing these things is the first phase but now we're going to integrate it into a full brain implant where you can then use the access of the internet via bluetooth mm -hmm. and uh become a superhuman cyborg uh, cy literally yeah I mean, and so and his argument now is that you are already a cyborg which i can't disagree with him absolutely i cannot are. disagree with him listener if you have a cell phone you're a cyborg you don't leave the house without it do you it's not physically attached to you i mean unless you have an iphone watch which or an watch. basically it is physically attached yeah. to you because n if it's above 50 percent, which mm -hmm. it highly is above 50 percent of yeah. people having a cell phone in their pocket at all times mm-hmm you're a cyborg. You, it, cyborg. All your information, your life mm -hmm. information, 
is put into this device mm -hmm. the, the the music you like the pictures that you have throughout like you're storing your m physical memories into this thing right. you are physical memories that's an interesting physical memories that's not something that's like real that's like a new thing we have now with pictures physical yeah. memory physical all the time memories and uh short term uh, it blows my mind that you can capture life like Snapchat mm -hmm. in short term, send it real time, and your friends across the fucking globe can open it up and see what you just sent. Mm -hmm. Like real, real time. Right. That's so crazy. And if you don't think that that that's that's kind of straying off, I just Pardon wanted me. to say I think it is so crazy that people that think that you know the the meditative woo woo like tinfoil hat sort of kind of people are crazy and like yeah they think they're weird tree huggers they're like they think things are connected you send little words in a text <laughs> and hit okay and hope that through the fucking right where how does it get the, there motherfucker through the ether where that is it your friend is going to get this message yeah and through the it, ether. And if it doesn't happen immediately, now you're so pissed. Through the I mean, I'm pissed too, but. ether. Yeah. Through nothingness. Like, you yep. can just receive shit and, yep. like, send it. And you can, like, your location can be tracked from a satellite in space. Like, dude. Like, just think about, like, the impossible has been created. Mm -hmm. That seems impossible. Well, dude, to me... It seems like it's like at what point do we allow it to change as much as it does? At what point do we make society match up and become UFC rather than WWE? At what point do mm -hmm. we, and not just political system, but like, so like, it's hard to like fully grasp. Like, so think of like the nature of the self, let's say. Mm -hmm. Like, like you can like learn about these things like, oh, okay, like what? Oh, I'm not like a person riding around behind my eyes. Like, what do you mean? Like, where is, like, who am I? Like I was, I was saying earlier, the example, like, like what, what's your ego, right? Mm -hmm. What um, the ego started when, let's say, we're the thing after monkeys, where in, in evolution we came after monkeys. However, mm -hmm. the fuck that happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, aliens, <laughs> aliens. I'm convinced, dude. I think that it's. I think that it was uh, uh, drugs. I think that it was mushrooms. I think we started I think eating mushrooms and it changed our consciousness. Stone ape theory. I like yeah, it. I love it. I, I dude. I, I think that's kind of where I'm at right now. But um. So so anyway. So so at one point when we start getting smarter, we start using language because say say you're um a, a monkey and you're trying to talk, communicate with the mm -hmm. other monkey across from you. You have a banana, and you're trying to tell them, banana you're pointing at it or you're, you know, you're shaking it, whatever. Like you're trying to signify this is the thing I'm talking about. It's a thing. So you created a thing to make civilization and like make a community, like g advance the evolution of consciousness really. Mm -hmm. So you started naming things. You picked up a banana, oh, banana. And that noise you make with your mouth means banana. And you, and you pick up um, a, a pointy rock and that's what you use to kill fish. And you, and you call that rock, rock. And so the person across from you, the monkey across from you goes, rock, rock, and you nod or whatever. And mm -hmm. he knows that that thing. It sounds like a good song. Rock, rock, rock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, so eventually once you start naming things, right, you have to, you get to a point where you're pointing at the like, banana, rock. And then you point at the monkey across from you and you're like, what are you, what are you? And so you have a name and you're Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. And from there, Jeff, you're a monkey. Jeff, you monkey. <laughs> From there, you you know so, so that so that's how like if you think of like what's the ego, what's the like who do we think we are? Um, so so uh, rewinding back in time from what I was saying, but so at what point do we actually start accepting that? Because like so 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 like that fact right that, that that's something that a lot of people can't comprehend. That's a, mm -hmm. something that is probably seen as false or something that doesn't you know, click to a lot of a lot of ways of thinking um, the way that we run the world is as if that is untrue mm -hmm. that's what that's what i'm getting at the way that we currently run the world the way that we do like the like donald trump ego for example like he's he's the best example of like how an ego mind who doesn't realize that 
he, he's not existing behind his eyes. He's not a person riding around mm-hmm. in his brain and body. Like of him running the world. So like at what point in, in civilization and society do we start living as if we're not like, we, we can't not have an ego, I suppose, but I think, uh, with the amount of comfortability that we're feeling is making the physical cause right now. We live in a physical world. Like everything is, physical if you say donald trump you're gonna think of like his wispy ass hair his blonde hair his wrinkly mm-hmm. face you have an image that pops up in your yeah mind. you have an image of who he is and not a feeling of what he possesses or like a, you know what i mean it's i just think it's so crazy that people can't see people for who they are and and most people be like you know what no like i see them for who they are but realistically mm-hmm. like if you cut off my arm, I would then not have an arm. It is just an attachment of myself, of this body that I'm trapped in. Like, it belongs to you because you're peace to it, but it's separated from you. It's, it's, if you cut it off, I no longer have it, but I'm still alive. It's still yeah. me. Like, 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 where are you? Yeah. So that? you're not, fi- you're not physical. You're not because. Yeah. If you were, you'd, you'd probably, a piece of you would be with your arm. And maybe it is. I don't know. But like, <laughs> maybe, it is. maybe it is. I don't know. But like, you can lose an arm and still be you, you know? And you can lose your legs and your other arm and both your ears and your nose and your lips and shit. And like, you're still you. I think we're going to get to a point in life where if this Neuralink really goes to that level, which I believe it will because technology is just advancing to a point where humans don't even ask what they want from life. They just accept what the new technology is with open arms. We're just a ball of habits is all we are. Yeah. Habits that were trained by somebody that's not, that didn't knowingly look out for our best interest at the beginning. And I think that with knowledge, that's what's tough is with knowledge, comes a lack of emotion if you ever met a scientist if you ever met a astrophysicist or something like that a lot of their talks a lot of their ideas come with not a person behind them they're they come with knowledge behind them Mm. and an idea and you have to separate the self from the idea Mm. because if you get consumed in the idea and you make it personal then things kind of go yeah. wacko the conversation lacks so yeah. much and and you can't like like if somebody uh, rejects your idea for this scientific finding or whatever the case may be you can't have your identity attached to that idea right um and i think that's where knowledge is is like a lack of identity and i think if we keep pursuing that then we will mm. become like this identityless species of like what people keep saying is like the aliens of like a big head and small body because we don't need to beat each other up and let everyone know who's the big dog in the yard mm-hmm. we're all just like mega smart and like don't need room for sex because we don't feel any urge to right like physically we express separate ourselves. ourselves from our biological uh, like lower consciousness yeah, feelings we're we're heading towards that direction we're going that way and right it's well so do you do you believe in do what, what do you think about the singularity do you know have you heard that singularity i've heard it I, i'm not I, I i'm not super keen on it either keen um i think it, it's yeah. essentially what the the thought is is like the final one human consciousness mm-hmm. and it's like this weird thing i think that it's um i believe some religions like like don't like it i think that it's like a bad thing but um uh but but i think that it's a misunderstood thing more than anything so so my opinion is that whatever we will be considering what we will end up calling the singularity i think is happening within our lifetime mm-hmm. for sure but just like nuts. i think it's going to be like within within like five years so uh branching to how quickly time and how quickly things move now so like Neuralink is going to be within a year. So think, so think about how how much shit that, that speeds up. Like we're going to, we're not just going to have this wonderful technology and then like people who 
our poor are still going to have to like go through the shitty chemotherapy versions, you know, like the, Mm -hmm. it's the best we have while we're trying to figure out the cure for this thing that you're suffering through, you know, the, Mm -hmm. um, like the, the shitty prescription drugs that people are just like, that are destroying their like physical bodies, like hurting their, you know, liver and kidneys and, and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what is the, the, the future with Neuralink existing? So like, say we're having this podcast and we know there's 700 people, (laughs) <laughs> there's 700 people who have Neuralink and it fucking works. Like at what rate are, is our entire civilization like, yo, yo, it could fix grandma. Like she could literally remember us. It's like it could dude. Steve could walk again. Like, holy fuck. He's been in a wheelchair his entire life. So, and so, Oh, it, it could literally uh, give you vision back. If your corneas have like, uh, like, uh, like deprecated, what was yeah, he saying? Yeah. Like, like they, like if you need to, it will rebuild your corneas. If you don't see like, holy fuck. And that's, technology within a year i think it changes a lot it's man. uh i think it's it's a lot different than what people assume it to be as far as like the fact of the whole world getting it i mm-hmm. think it's uh it's kind of it's going to be like tesla you know the the cars are expensive not the average consumer can buy them they're right. amazing for the world they are the first electric car that is luxury that is fucking from the future if you ever ridden in one it is the coolest driving car i've ever been in it is the fastest car i've, I've ever one, been in dude they're so cool they're beautiful uh, they're amazing they're, they're out of our reach they're out of the everyday person's reach and i think that's what's going to happen with Neuralink. at least the first stages are going to be like you got to have some money to to have any of these effects happen to you at first and then you know once the once watch your cord down there oh sorry uh, you could, bro. I just don't want to cut off on you. Yeah. Keep going. Once the uh, the uh, newer updates come out and the newer models come out and things like that, I think they'll be like passed down like an old iPhone. Oh right. To, you know. Yeah. You know. You got the one that like, in, you know. it cures your Alzheimer's, but it fucks up your left leg. We don't. We haven't figured yeah, that one out. Yeah. You got a limp. It's, for it's just the rest version of your life. <laughs> yeah. It's the beta. <laughs> yeah. Well, so okay. you got a twitch. Have you seen the movie Elysium? I was just about to think about that. Is that the uh, is that the movie with um, Matt Damon? Matt Damon, and yeah, he has the bro. plug in the back of his yeah, head. Yeah, that's the one. That's, that's the one. That's literally what I was thinking. Yeah, Shay and I were talking about that. It's it's um, man, uh, in a fantasy world, it's like, whoa, that's crazy. But it's like, oh shit. So so that's kind of what I was pointing at. I think is is this this gap that's going to be created very quickly between the very rich and the very poor. Mm-hmm. I mean. Elon Musk is the kind of guy who is not stupid and he's aware of those sort of things. So he's going to the cost of materials to create this sort of thing is gone. So, so it's, it's so much smaller. It's less material. Like, so massively producing these things. Like I'm hoping that we can have the amount of time, let's say that the people on the ground, like in the movie Elysium, Mm -hmm. there's going to be some sort of like, there's hella people with Neuralink, there's hella people with these magical, whatever fucking scientific curing their disease. They're living up in the sky though, Mm -hmm. because they're the rich class. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a huge gap between the really poor and the really rich is what I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping that people like Elon seems like he has like a good, you know, my intuition tells me that, I don't know. It seems like he's going to try to lessen that gap. The yeah. amount of years yeah. that there is a huge gap, I hope that it's, you know, four to five years. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, there, we were struggling for a couple of years. And there was a lot of people who were like literally still dying from diseases that people are walking around cured from. But I'm hoping there's less time. Do you believe in, do you believe in Neuralink as, uh, or the progression of technology as a way in which, humanity should go and should progress to without hesitation or without sort of that because you're a very very uh spiritually enlightened person um you are connected to the earth you meditate every day outside you you know you are very consciously aware of people's emotions and feelings um are you nervous that this could be an avenue that takes the human out of a being I'm not nervous about it, but I think that's what's happening. Yeah. And, so, and are you on board for that? Weirdly, weirdly kind of, but not like, because that's what I want. Like I just, mm-hmm. I just think that logically. So 
if you see us as organic bootloaders, I think even Elon has been, I think he's the one who said that. Like if you see humanity as organic bootloaders, like mm -hmm. we're always just trying to progress. Like, have you studied Graham Hancock? Do you know who Graham Hancock is? I've heard of his name. So he is essentially someone who has been trying to prove to like mainstream media for lack of a better term there, um, that like, he's like studied the pyramids and like how time worked and how the ice age really worked. And he's like, Hey, there's a cycle that happens every so-and-so billion years and it's going to happen soon. And we need to fucking get the fuck off the planet sort mm -hmm. of thing. I don't know if, I don't know if he believes we should get off the planet, but essentially he points out that we haven't thought long term about our history. Like we had, we don't fully understand history. And I think, how do I round this out? I, I don't want to put ideas. Um, I, I don't want to misspeak on what yeah, he actually yeah, yeah. believes in. But so, so check his stuff out. He just kind of like revitalizes like what actually happened in history. Like some of his, some of his ideas are pretty far fetched. Um, I'm not saying that I believe every single one, but he's got a lot of great info. So, but, but so my a lot of my connections are. I think that if you detach, like I was saying, like live in a world where we don't have egoic minds, where we don't have, we're not attached to the, the life that we have because we know that it ends. Mm -hmm. We enjoy every second because we know that in some amount of years, maybe right away, maybe instantly, maybe in 15 years, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. So we live a society that doesn't accept death. Mm -hmm. We try to paint a story as in there's a magical better life than this after death or we just kind of ignore it. We kind of just try to maximize right now Brush the comfort. It off to the side. Yeah, and so, but but if so, say we weren't doing that, right? Say mm -hmm. we like if you just look at if you take the the personification of humanity, I guess that's a weird thing to say. Mm -hmm. Out of the equation, and you look at like what is the Earth doing? Mm -hmm. What's happening? What what is it like? If you didn't know what it was, but you all you had was you're sitting in space with a notepad and you're like studying it for billions and billions of years. And you're just looking at the earth and this might be naive, but I don't know. And you're like, what is it fucking doing? Eventually it's like, oh, okay, it's starting to get green grass and it's starting to, and then all of a sudden, you know, you see what like flowers or mm -hmm. you start seeing different things pop up and like what used to be one big landmass, one big chunk over the billions of years, it starts to do different things and it formulates an atmosphere and it starts to pop up like the fish somehow get legs and they can walk out, you know, the evolution. Like if mm -hmm. you're watching evolution on the earth happen, if we take ourselves out of like our, our self, like Brandon and Jake out of it, and I'm just observing what the earth is doing um, without inserting myself as a human on it, it seems like earth is doing this thing. Like it's like, like it's opening its peacock wings, but then like its peacock wings may only stay open for, you know, a few hundred years and then mm -hmm. it withers back and completely dies and bursts into flame mm -hmm. in, in, in life in in recreation and shit just restarts. Right. So I think I, if you think, um, um, I think, because if you look at what consciousness is doing to humans as just a being, like there's no other, we, we assume that there's no other like animal that really has a consciousness that thinks as advanced as us or mm -hmm. as like, because there's no other animals that are like, we need to leave the atmosphere. And like, why is that a thought in our head? Like what is, what is consciousness trying to communicate through humanity mm -hmm. rather than consciousness is humanity? If you just think of what is consciousness trying to say through humanity, because humanity is the separate. highest level. It's a separate entity. Of yeah, and if you if so, the way that I see it, and this is where it loops back to your question, Brandon, is 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 consciousness being okay? If you think of consciousness as just the Earth, like con like Gaia, like mm -hmm. like the Earth and life, it is itself. It's what we know to be life. It is we are that, and it wants life. We know that consciousness, Earth wants to live because that's what it's always been doing it's mm -hmm. creating different spe species and it's creating different animals and it's always life like a, a gazelle hides from a lion because it doesn't want to die it favors life mm -hmm. and we have them like if, if, again if you like speed up time when you're observing the earth do this it looks like it's like these slow down like the gazelle and the lion but if you just speed it up it's just mm -hmm. this quick little dot on the on the earth that's just doing its thing yeah so if we look at like what are humans doing and what's the thing that they're doing I think that humans might actually be trying to get off Earth because Earth might be doing another like withering thing soon. Yeah. So I think that 
we are consciousness for, for some reason trapped in, in, in a sack of meat right we're trapped in a sack of meat and, and i'm not i, I don't know how 100 percent confirmed i feel on this i'm kind of observing this now as we talk about it but but uh, if if we see if we see ourselves as not just the universe consciousness but we're earth the planet in particular mm-hmm. like what like is there some crazy connection to that itself um and, and you look at us as like where the earth is just one of those little dead wishy flowers those dandelion wishy flowers mm-hmm. and like it's going to blow eventually like there's some, some force some something is going to blow on that earth mm-hmm. and the little seeds hopefully sprout out throughout the universe and plant more little seeds of earth mm-hmm. throughout because that, that can be able to withstand right anything. because they have new knowledge yeah and, and by seeds on other earths i mean like let's say us going to mars mm-hmm. so we, we, now that we're on mars we have the entire consciousness the entire knowledge of an entire earth lifetime like because we not only have our hundred years that we're on the earth you know 60 or whatever the fuck it is mm-hmm. we have all the knowledge that all the other humans have told us in like books and, and information now in the internet yeah so so you have if you think of consciousness as the entity that started on earth as far as we know started you know probably big bang bang is probably more specific i don't i just don't know mm-hmm. but but if you think of us as as the earth um yeah i, th- I think we're we're the, alan watts says if you observe the earth um, we thought it wasn't doing anything it was just rocks he's like but but no wait on second thought it's it's peopling it's peopling he, he, he says that and i was like oh that that kind of makes sense you know and and what are the what we take we take responsibility for the peopling but we're just the consciousness riding around in the peopling uh-huh. and i i think that if we detach ourselves from that and it sounds like ripping emotions and humanity out from what it, it may actually be but it's it sounds dissensitive to humanity almost in a way mm-hmm. to think of us as just a consciousness that needs to escape earth but i think we might be like we're not kind of on a path of killing ourselves for one yeah but yeah it's it's just kind of fighting super crazy thought um what if from the beginning you say that it is highly plausible that we came from apes that took uh, the idea is that apes took psychedelic mushrooms or psychedelic substances mm-hmm. that because they were just like enhanced their, like. yeah enhanced their cognition and, and created abstract thought and things like that but for anyone who has taken mushrooms DMT or some sort of psychedelic you understand that you're faced with separate entities or uh, conscious thought that seems beyond you that speaks to you um, in a way that is extremely profound in a way that you've never thought before it's like it's a higher than experiences by the way it's which you should because you would just be like yeah. whoa I mean I've um, taken a lot of random drugs I mean one time I think I did LSD but it was just a, a different night um, but yeah go on go on go on uh, um but yeah, so what I was thinking is maybe there is a certain consciousness that, this is super high talk, but mm-hmm. there's a certain consciousness that the earth has within itself or the universe has within itself that is embedded into the earth, it could be in mushrooms or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, that then used animals like monkeys as a host and... Right began to coincide and coexist and use that back and forth uh, psychedelic enhancement mm. it, with the combination of evolving species and now we've gotten so deep into it that you can tell that we are a weird combination of this human thought and human uh I don't know th- this diff- this definitely deeper level of structural thinking and abstract thought and creativeness and also we have this very very animalistic uh, right. uh we're always wanting what's best for our survival our our immediate survival mm-hmm. not necessarily someone else's to the point where it tricks us and we don't even realize it that we're doing it you exactly know? it's an the egoic it's, mind it's an urge and 
when you are faced with someone who is very enlightened with themselves and understands that there's this you need to wake up to this separation of your animalistic self and your conscious self you know of yeah i don't know if you've felt it which i feel like you have oh yeah i mean i totally you, have you, obviously by the way you live and by the way you think and articulate yourself there's two sides of you there's a very animalistic side and there's a very conscious side mm -hmm. and there's a a body of you that just is innately you that you just kind of live your day-to-day -day life like um but there's a a, a clear divide between the two mm -hmm. um and i it, it it feels like a host situation to me kind of because it's a shark doesn't necessarily know a lot of the times that it has like those little things swimming on its side and it's right, it's yeah. you know that little creature is like eating off all the bacteria or, or all the bugs that could be harmful to the shark right and, you know behind him but he's never looking behind him he's always looking in front of him for the things that's going to ensure his survival you have to look backwards at yourself and be like what is what, what is me what is helping me what is harming me what is mm -hmm. uh, i mean what yeah. what am i what, what's going on here? what's going on here yeah and <laughs> right. not just like i'm here to live and eat and sleep right. and fuck and says who yeah. says who why you know what i mean mm -hmm. like like it's 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 interesting that there's, you know, well, what, okay, so, so what do you, I think we should stay in this direction. I'm like trying this, to think of, I like this direction. Neuralink. So what, what is, okay, okay, so, so going back to Neuralink and what it changes in our day to day, like, like obviously the, in, in this, the thing with new technology is in, in our heads, we kind of think like, oh, it's out. And then all of a sudden in an instant, everything, everybody has it, everybody can get it. Like, it's not mm -hmm. like that. There's going to be a trickle down, but, but we are at a, such a time where this shit is so fast. It's so fast. Un like it's unbelievably fast. Right. And, and, and so, and so I'm just curious. I just think like the, the gap between, I don't, I don't want to keep defaulting that, but like the gap between the people who like, I mean, cause, cause there's a lot of people and I'm not saying there's anything, not a damn thing wrong with them. There's people who don't like, they're just in Alaska living and they have no TV and they don't know what the fuck's going on. They mm -hmm. don't, they're just living, you know what I mean? Like they're just, you know, and they're content with it. They're yeah. just, that's just their way of life. Right. So, so, so how do we, how is the world going to coincide? Because right now we have this weird world where people, where people are arguing and killing each other over presumptions they have of each other that aren't actually true how do we have a world where it's not presumptuous there is your 85 year old grandpa billy is literally talking to a fucking cyborg that's 17 years old like he's delivering his package and, and by cyborg i mean a 17 year old boy with microchips in his brain with with silicone data in his brain um that is you know that you is know what I mean? cybernetically connected to the cloud right. of data that is this hive mindset of right. everyone's collected information into one odd conscious subconscious not conscious thing just it's just knowledge it's just knowledge that's it it's nothing else you know right it's it's something that you can just tap into yeah like what is it's just really hard to, to envision the gap between here and there, right? It is, but it it still blows my mind to this day that the knowledge that we already know, that it, simple facts about history and, and things like that that are known, uh, how to do finances, um, how to uh, file your taxes, like um, you have to go to school for that. Uh, and a lot of people get ripped off on becoming a doctor when most people know, like, like there are doctors out there and there are people that know how to teach what goes on in the human body. And yet they're charging 
people's life's work of Mm -hmm. uh, everything they earned in debt onto this person for information that is already known by people it's right yeah it's 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 free knowledge is free knowledge is absolutely free it's it's me saying hey the sky is blue and you go the sky's blue the sky's blue Mm -hmm. holy shit the sky's blue that's knowledge right there right if i told you this this beer bottle was transparent or translucent or whatever it is uh and you're like what's translucent Uh, you could see straight through it right oh it's transparent that's that's what it is yeah that's what it is oh i didn't know that now i do that's what that's what college is and that's what people are paying their entire life's work for well so even before that before college i mean i talk about kind of the breakdown of our of communities on an individual level Mm -hmm. think about um and this is kind of a a storybook fairy tale sort of version in a movie hallmark situation but you know you're like gosh i'm I'm making these cookies and i've been living on my own for two years now oh i can't remember so i'm going to call grandma and grandma how how long do i put these what what do i set the oven to and she's going to tell you exactly and whatever but like nowadays when you're just cooking some cookies you're like i'm going to look on google because Mm -hmm. it literally takes five seconds compared to calling grandma and Mm -hmm. you you know what i mean like so so all the so imagine that situation where everything is just simplified like we're just cutting out other people Mm -hmm. um everything is simplified and we're we're kind of like taking that situation and amplifying it in every way Mm -hmm. like information like we're kind of losing the need to interact with each other because all your questions all your wonder which is what makes us want to walk up to each other and wonder what that person is about Mm -hmm. oh they're not going to hurt me like what's happening here i think Mm -hmm. but you 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 alleviate the need for like communication i guess And, and and oddly, it, it obviously is probably a conspiracy at the highest level, but right. it seems so weird that we are in a time like this where technology already forces people to look down at their phone if they're sitting and standing in line at the DMV or whatever and just waiting. They don't interact with other people. They're, they're secluded to what makes them comfortable their phone themselves Mm -hmm. they're like i don't want to talk excuse me i don't want to talk to anyone now you throw an infectious disease in there and you have people like i was saying before covering up their mouths so you can't see any facial expressions from people uh you're taught to stay at a distance Mm -hmm. uh lock yourself inside for however long we've been locked inside for on hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and days um and and it it seems like they're trying to integrate a life in which people are becoming like that will be the norm of like being secluded being by yourself uh, and having everything gifted to you is going to be enough for life and to take it even further as we go and divulge into technology and and new things and ways of life like technology is so so nuts because we see life as like if you were to think of dimensions and you're like well you can go 12 dimensions deep like if you were this mega guru or whatever and then you have the maker of Microsoft saying, I can plug you into 36 different dimensions via mm. uh, VR headset that has all sensory, sound, touch. Like, you won't even know. You could, I could tell you that I'll give you a lifetime worth of a gladiator warrior's life. You'll know the feelings, you'll know the pain, you'll die, you'll wake up, and it'll only be two minutes of your life, ten minutes of your life, ten hours of your life, whatever the case may be. Right. And you're going to wake up and be like, what the fuck, I just lived my whole right. fucking life. 
oh, I lost my kids. I lost. No, you were just playing a game. Chill out. Remember? Right. You're Brandon. Remember? Watch this I mean, video. what are the odds that that's not exactly what's happening right now? It could be. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, that is the direction we're moving in. You know, right. it's like some Rick and Morty shit. It's some real, no, it is exactly. real, real possibilities yeah. of like coming. And people don't understand, like they're still stuck in this physical world. And yeah. like, I think that's a little bit more of the older generation because they mm-hmm. don't really understand it. But like, they can literally, like my little brother was telling me he bought a Oculus Rift mm. thing. Virtual and he, reality. And he said his Netflix uh, uh, app on there it's like you have your little joysticks or whatever and you're looking in the in the headset and he clicks on netflix and it takes him to uh a secluded lake with a campfire in front of him and it's crackling and there's a levitating uh massive screen above the lake that is illuminating the sky and all the trees around him and it's playing his favorite movie on top of this lake as he's sitting in front of or behind a camera. This is real. He did this. This is, re- this is yeah. what Oculus does right, right now. This is what Oculus does right now. He can watch uh he can watch whatever Netflix show above this floating, levitating, massive movie sized screen up floating above a lake while so he's the in stimulus the campfire. Do we? So I haven't done virtual reality yet. Is Neither it, have I. So so, but I've heard from people. They're like, dude, no, it's real. Like you, like if you're walking on like an edge, like you like won't go to the edge. Like I've, it's scary as fuck. I've I've done a roller coaster. Stuff, I've yeah. done a roller coaster one, mm. uh, and I shit you not, I, it would it started off taking off just like a roller coaster, and it's all VR, so it's like. They could make some like ungodly drop that's like whoa, mm-hmm. like we're about to take off, and the, and the machine simulates like what kind of tilting, right, tilting and, t- yeah. and tipping and things like that. So we tip, and I literally slammed my head on the back when we started falling down because it started tipping, and I looked down and I was like, oh shit, we're taking off like down, and it felt like from what the feeling felt like, my stomach dropped. My like the thing leaned forward, so my chair was forward, wow. and I hit my head in the back because I was trying to lean back, and it it was so real, it was so real, and the wind was blowing in my face from each direction, and it was just, and this is the very 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 beginning stages of it. This is right. like the this is like the PlayStation One, like yeah. Nintendo. This is the shit that they're selling to kids. Like think about yeah. like how advanced the the technology really likely is. Yeah. Uh, on the level of the government or military is funding a lot of this shit for whatever reason, like training example. Holy shit. They already have, they've already released military that. Military training. Sorry to cut you off again. No, no. They've already released that 5G. I'm not going to go. Coronavirus? Into, I'm not going to go into 5G. <laughs> Great. Now they're going to take my video but down because they heard 5G. How, how fast 5G is, they're allowing doctors with like extremely, extremely good trauma doctors to go via virtually uh to connect the some gloves or some sort of thing uh to a robot that's in afghanistan and work on soldiers that have just been shot and killed Mm -hmm. with their hand movements real time like the most minimal lag that you can believe we're no longer limited by the physical world no, our, our most genius anywhere. people can be anywhere they need to be. You can have, you know, your your brilliant people working together in the same room. I mean, it's kind of like what holograms do on Star Wars, right? Yeah. Like, I think that it skyrockets our asses right into the future. Like, we are just sl- about to we, slingshot. I think we we jumped. We jumped with technology. We quantum leaped. Because I mean, just think about it. Like from. What is it like? Let's say like sixteen hundred to nineteen hundred. What happened? What 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 massive technologies like really just took over the? the well, what, when was like electricity and the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds? I think because after that, then that's when cars started, you know, taking into effect and things like that. But mm. Uh, just even for that example of like 
like even if some some amazing things did happen like it took hundreds of years for some amazing things to happen right. people were still like raping and killing and pillaging and right. using There's still swords, slaves and shit bro slaves and and using swords <laughs> four and shit. people ago there was slaves and shit three people ago and now we're moving a hundred years in the span of three years yeah. four years five right. years right. like could you, like if you look at an iphone 8 now you're like that's a piece of shit that right, is a piece bro. of shit my, you got my buttons my, on your shit. Get out of yeah, here. Yeah, get out of here. My whole screen, my whole screen is filled. You know what I mean? Like, it's all I could touch it all. Like mm -hmm. now they have foldable phones, and now they have all this right. stuff. Like, well, so our perception changes because even just the phone. Like I was talking about how, like at the very beginning of this conversation, I was mentioning how, like on the 14th of March, it was like we're chill. I think it's fine. And then 16th of March is like get the fuck in the house. Mm -hmm. Don't touch anybody. Lysol. Drink bleach. Like That's the how fast technology is the thinking about phones i actually had a time because i had like um when i was younger i i i rented a room from like a um kind of a hoarder situation mm. um and so it just really like germs and, and touching people and touching things that i didn't like like very much like affected my like mental cognitive ability so um ocd kind of so like uh touching your screen like if you had a phone that you weren't supposed to touch a screen it's just a button phone mm -hmm. Um, it stresses me out when people touch their screens. My, Tyler Daniels could actually account for this. He would mm -hmm. always fuck with me. So like flip phone and someone puts their bare finger on the screen. This seems so weird, right? Like why would that bother you? But I'm telling you back then, the only time you would see a screen like this before phones was like a TV. And it's like, dude, don't fucking put your screen. Don't put your fingerprints on my screen. Yeah, like you yeah. don't touch TV screens. Um, you don't touch like, like I don't like, you know, fingerprints on glass tables. So that sort of thing. So, but, but what I'm saying is, is that there was a point where like my perception of reality, like, you know, maybe I was just young and in high school sort of thing, but our, our perception of like what we feel about these objects, what we feel about these, this technology changes, like even internally, like it changes like my, our physiology. Like I would get stressed out when say, um, you know, you, you touch a screen, but now it's like you, you touch, you only touch a screen. There's no buttons on my phone. Mm -hmm. Like, so I changed, I, I, I developed into it because I'm like, I want this technology so bad. Mm -hmm. um, I forget exactly what I was trying to point a finger at there. But um, uh, if, 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 we, if we look at, I guess, just our adaptation mm -hmm. and our ability to change, like it seems like it's like even our personality and our like um, acceptance of these technologies may, may change very quickly. Mm -hmm. Like when phones first came out, I'm sure there was ton tons of people, the internet first came out, they're like, that's crazy like i'm not using that that's stupid and then five years later they're a completely different person they're on facebook every day they're they're using the internet every yeah. day like we we see our advancement in technology from where we're at at the moment we discover it but we don't realize how quickly like oh shoot it's only been a year and a half and i literally hated that technology mm -hmm. a year ago like we don't we don't look back and realize that we that we were kind of against certain technologies in certain ways, like before it's, you know, not too late, but before it's, we're, we're consumed by it. Yeah, so like, what, at what point are we going to be in virtual reality? But like, also just before we go into virtual reality, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's slimy the way they do it. It's very, mm. it's very consciously slime. slime. Yeah. It's on, very, very slimy. Um, it's kind of like, commercials for movies or commercials for for uh products and things like that um it's an innate thing it's that you don't necessarily know you even realize uh your phone will slow down uh hence making you think that your uh, cpu or processor or anything like that in your phone is is slowing down uh you start to lose service you apps are kind of sketchy a little bit uh, as your phone gets older you're going to realize that it boots on a little bit slower um, it's it's going to drop calls a little bit more all these things happen innately because they want you to upgrade your phone you know they make it hard for you to have this phone mm -hmm. so even if you fight it and you're like you know what god damn it like i really don't want I, I don't want them to stick it to me like i want to be in control of my phone situation mm -hmm. they're just going to keep 
it's an automated system. It's automated. Right. It's it's there's no human behind it going, God damn it, this guy is fucking he won't give up. He won't give up. It's Throw a ro- your it's, three. It's a robot going, Give up today. Give yeah, up tomorrow. He does not care. Give up the next day. The machine does what it's programmed to do. I will have you. And it's just like it, it's a relentless, soulless thing that can that well, is propelling you to to abide by the rules that you know <sighs> coincides with yeah. everybody it's it, and it's something that you don't even know happens like or even if you do know happens you're just like i'm not bigger than this phone company right you know like i just need my phone right now man i just so, need my phone so how do we unless we state just so we can continue with trying to let's say figure out what's going on how is it if we if we were to assume to continue moving forward with with pointing out that yes it's slimy that that's happening but we're also as a society as a human race we are slaves to advancement Mm -hmm. so the reason why your iphone 3 lags is because all the servers and all the money and all the focus from apple has been moved to the next whatever Mm -hmm. and the more that you move it like you know it's kind of like the newest Xbox has way more people working on it than the first Xbox that ever came out. Like mm-hmm. at some point they're like, Hey guys, we're going to shut down these servers. Cause there's like not, we just don't have a lot of people to employ. It's not returning profit on the Xbox, the old Xbox is. So we're going to shut it down. There's, mm-hmm. you're not gonna be able to play, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, so those sort of things happen. Like we're a slave to just fucking momentum mm-hmm. of like, cause it's not that they don't realize that they're stepping on people or anything, but like these big technology companies, like, are almost they're almost a slave to this like constant like we we're talking about we we the inability to be uncomfortable mm-hmm. the inability to be like this is okay where it's at like it will stumble into what's next it's a constant like better better how do we make it better and how do we make it better than than microsoft and faster and faster mm-hmm. and how do we make it better like so our market our market mind for the human race has kind of like led to the to the speeding up of wonderful technologies but at the same time it's like our detriment it's it's it sorry it's a uh, it's come full circle it, yeah. in a sense because these companies have created a piece of technology that for some may dislike but for the vast majority of it when they say that they're going to create something new and then the people are like yes yes we want it we want it we want it you give it to them they have it for a while they know that new technology is progressing extremely fast and know that they get tired of the same old stuff. The people then go back to the to the uh, company and say, well, what else you got? And they're like, shit, I'll show you what I got. Mm-hmm. Like, let's go, boys, let's go. A slave to the consumer. Yeah, again. And, and you're now their slave to the right. consumer because they can't stop producing for the consumer and it's making them right. money, so they're like, there's no reason why we should stop. Like, we're just going to keep these profits going and going and the people are keeping it going. So it's like this never-ending cycle of the people consuming and the consumers consuming right. what people want to consume and just yeah we're we're trying to get somewhere mm-hmm. we're we're constantly trying to arrive at somewhere that doesn't exist we're trying to arrive at at, at a finish line that never existed kind of mm-hmm. like I was talking about Alan Watts a, a, a dance is not f- for me to get from this side of the room to that side of the room mm-hmm. it's about the dance in between so like are we do you think maybe we're we're a bit blinded by like thinking we need to advance I think. I think it, life would be a little bit better if we knew what exactly we were advancing for and right. to. If there was a goal, if there was a common goal with the entire world, with the United States, with whoever, saying, by the year 2040, as a society, we want to be here. Mm, is this something to what, shoot at. Is, yeah, is this what we're moving forward? Mm. Is this what we want for our people? Right. Yes or no? If it's yes, let's go fucking full on steam and you know what? Yeah. Like I might I'm gonna work overtime. We're all working as a people right now. The the entire world, the entire community, our entire country 
is focused on right. getting here by 2040. If we beat that that uh, achievement, we've just achieved it. If we come short, we still got life to live. We're still we could still get there. Yeah, 2040. We we given up on on accomplishments. We've given up on understanding that there are marathons to run and all you want to do is just jog all day you know it's it's just you're taking the life out of people when you could approach it differently you could approach life so much differently by setting a goal for the people and not just having them jog in a circle and make them lifeless and just make them hate their fucking existence right. like you can't have what you want as the people up top you just have to set it a goal in a way that resonates with everyone right i mean so so setting a goal that resonates with everyone so like what if we had earlier we were talking about you mentioned um we we're having a nice conversation about um like vision about like you're like kind of asking yourself like what you want out of life mm -hmm. and you're like kind of you're talking about how like before bed you kind of like reconnect with that thing i have some friends who um I was just talking with yesterday, texting with him, um, talking about how like they have, they're Christians and they like to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, they're once a day, they have like the pages or whatever it is. But, um, you know, so, so to me what that does, that reconnects them to like the person that they want to be. Like that's like, a, mm -hmm. it's a reminder of their, vi their vision. Cause like, so, so I have like, the, I painted a couple of days ago, what's your vision on the wall over here? I added to it. Um, How fitting. Timing, I know. How but, fitting. Uh, but like, so, so you were mentioning that. So let me bring them back into there's four um so does humanity have a vision so i think that we unknowingly have a vision i think that we're working towards a vision that's fucking messy or we're working towards too many different ones so if we could have some sort of coinciding as an earth as a planet we're all like dude we're just gonna like you guys you keep your nationalism like america is fucking awesome china is fucking awesome it's be the way you are it's glad but everybody glad to have differences yeah po point the front of your ship though at this and like what if what if in some this is some ideal amazing cool world where like some millionaire somebody who's just fucking like elon musk somebody who everybody loves just says like earth's vision is and it's like mm -hmm. some great sentence and everybody's like damn you know what if we did just follow that it does displace a new law this could go in the place of like you know law of gravity um uh, uh like uh, you know we have absolutes in our universe mm -hmm. maybe we're on the brink this is an interesting concept of thought experiment mm -hmm. we're on the brink of a new law of 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 of, of discovery so like um, what goes up must come down. Mm -hmm. yeah, what um, every action has an equal or opposite reaction, like um, Einstein's theory of gravity, like all these things. What if we're on the brink of something um, that that will be seen as like a combination of not only consciousness, biological laws, bi bi biology, um, laws of the universe, our five senses, how we perceive reality. Um, but also it has to do with society and civilizations because mm -hmm. we can't deny our physical reality. Like as much as we are not humans riding around in like a little controller system in the back of our brains mm -hmm. where we, we can't deny that we have like, I am also Jake and you are also Brandon, mm -hmm. right? We have physical beings and we have through civilization is how we interpret things. Yeah. So I'm almost wondering if we're on the brink as humanity of a new law that's going to be in the form of poetic language mm -hmm. poetic thematic creativity so like what is your vision like um so you know people like i i my vision is to end suffering or my vision is to um see or, or um experience you know w w okay so so let's let's go back and forth what mm -hmm. what do you think what would be a humanity vision i think first the humanity vision would be to understand that humanity shouldn't work for people at the top have visions just like elon musk wants to go to the moon or just like you know uh whatever something like that like mm. people in power have positions that they want they have visions that they want to achieve but they understand that 
people are erratic and sporadic and they're kind of hard to control so let's kind of mass manipulate them and let's kind of keep them working around the clock and things like that so they don't uh, they don't have the time not only the time to figure out what we're doing but they don't have the time to uh, necessarily care either they're working so much and they're worried about how they're going to keep uh, food on the table how their bills are going to be paid there's that you know that's all going to happen but they're kind of dumb because people work the best together like no right. one person is the smartest one person if you have a hundred people right. and it outmatches that one person immediately try surviving Why? just being born with nobody around we're already so close america is a great a great country that has a lot of free enterprise and things like that but a lot of it from so many like almost everyone i know is not free in a sense of the way they work and a lot of it is by choice but a lot of it is <clears throat> because of the fear of not being able to provide for their family of course, very real if fear. there is a way in which the top government officials and high high ranking business can understand that let's have a vision but we've kind of been on the wrong path we should all kind of work together right now mm -hmm figure out if we can get to this vision faster if we all work together and all kind of get away from whatever mm -hmm. we don't need to be working on because if there's if there's a job where someone is cleaning baseboards in a fucking batting cage area and he doesn't need that job it's a non-essential job like the boss is just a dick because he loves clean baseboards. You could be utilizing that human in another job mm. that is beneficial for the entire human race right. that with their contribution can help us get here. And once we get here, we won't need all these other jobs that that kind of suppress people mm. and and keep them away from their families and keep them working their ass right. off nine to five, working double jobs, not being able to see their kids until the weekend, whatever the case may be. Right. We have to come together as a, hum as, as a human species and learn that together is where we need to go. Right. Together is the vision. That's the first vision that we need is absolute togetherness. That's so obvious, right? That's it's, that's a huge. It's the one, most right? obvious, like, but it's it's the last. Yeah, we are possible. one. Like the. Yeah, it's, let's, it's, let's see on the podcast. We are one. We are like, one. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> no, yeah, no, a, dude. It, it, that does. It makes complete sense. It's like, why are zombie hordes so effective? Because they fight as one. You know, it's it sounds <laughs> so crazy, but like. They are so fucking unstoppable because well, they, have they one come goal. at you with one common goal, and that is to eat your brains. So what is our our common goal now is, I mean, it's survive, but it's also like it has like this like, comfort appeal to it. Mm -hmm. It has this. This, this false comfort it, though, because right. they, they present comfort with materialism. Right. And they don't say, hey... Let's work our ass off as a as United States people. Let's work our ass off to get to this goal. Along those along the the way, every day you work, we're gonna have some break time where like everyone everywhere takes a break. We all mingle. We all mm. make sure we're eating healthy. We all make sure we're drinking water. We all make sure that we are fulfilling our human needs and mm. not just slave laboring our way up to this goal that we need to fulfill you know right. it's like we're consciously aware that you are a person you are a person this is probably a, a dream world that will never happen but this is what needs to happen this is what is very very plausible it's mm. it's not it's not something that you could be like huh no that's that's way out of the picture there was a statistic that said that out of most nine to five jobs, I think four hours total of like absolute productivity goes into a job and the rest of mm -hmm. the hours are spent 
on your phone right. talking or like like daydreaming sleeping whatever the case may be there's so many unutilized hours that are unnecessary for people that could be fulfilled in other ways like you could have group exercises and group meals like going to germany is was one of the nuts experiences for me because they had they have a uh, beer gardens and so like any day throughout the day it's always filled like you know breakfast lunch and dinner whatever it is like you'll just be walking around and there's just like a massive 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 park or whatever with park benches everywhere and people just sit next to each other and just mingle hmm. and they just like talk and drink beer and have sausage and like just do whatever and that sort of community doesn't exist in a lot of places definitely doesn't exist mm -hmm. here um i think just the like slowly integrating things like that and just right so appreciating like like knowing where we're going but appreciating where we are right That's because i think we'd get there faster if we were blatantly honest about where we wanted to go right like there's we don't even ask ourselves there's skepticism from the from people at the top when you lie you're always thinking of a way to tell the truth you're mm. always thinking of avenues it's like chess you tell a, you have a lie that you want to tell someone and if they try and call your bullshit you have this avenue and if they call you on some angle from that you have another avenue right. that is your escape goat and another one and another one and another one when you tell the truth and just say hey this is where we want to go let's talk about this there might be some negative repercussions of it but let's talk about it let's see right. what like what we got to do to get here that is kind of cool for everyone and like beneficial for everyone it's it, it just seems crazy that the obvious is so hard for people to understand it's right. so hard for people to understand that we are destroying the earth and like fucking millions of cars throughout the world all day every day are just driving and just mm -hmm. polluting the world like crazy and you're just like yeah what's the long term of the way that we are living life yeah. like we don't like like we detach we're so instant gratification that we're so caught up in ourselves that we detach like dude imagine like honestly if i was raising a kid right now i'd be like fuck man i'm sorry that we're bringing you like into this world of such unknowns mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like i'm, I'm sure there's plenty of parents who are like kind of curious like hoping that hoping that like some sort of clarity comes yeah man soon. like <laughs> but yeah because we like it, dude what's the point of we've got to have an earth in a hundred years. We've got to have earth and you know, we, we need to be, we're smart enough as a species where we need to be able to like stop the momentum and mm -hmm. take a look and be like, all right guys, like we're there, we're clearly evolving like the internet, yeah. this technology, like we're clearly changing. Like we need to figure out how to help the rest of the people change. Um, and that sounds like a fucking imperialistic hand mm -hmm. <laughs> to force Neuralink inside every human. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that's, that's rough, you know? So man, it's, it's, they're astronomical questions with so much depth mm -hmm. and I don't know how we, how we solve them. And I, I think talking about them just as like, like we're trying to talk about at the level that we really are. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm no, I'm no genius, man. I'm no, I'm no like I'm philosopher. Dummy. I'm just, I'm just, a dude talking with my friend man i'm just i'm just contemplating these things that i study and and, and look up you know mm -hmm. i i think that a lot more people should be too i think a lot more people can like ask themselves like where am i going but like where am i kind of wonder about like everybody as a whole like mm -hmm. what are we doing because you can kind of look at people with more i don't know empathy obviously but like like if you just see people as allies mm -hmm. you know what i mean like oh like you oh okay you've 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 reacted to your biological urges the same way that I have, but I know that that's not who you are. Mm -hmm. It's not who, that's not who, I don't know. It's, I think it's just a different perspective of seeing, seeing people for like what they, what brings them joy, what like brings mm -hmm. the most people some sort of solidarity and like, uh, pureness and togetherness and light and love and like because mm -hmm. because what are we we're just you know spiritual beings riding around in an ape's body or whatever came after an ape 
and and we're just like trying to figure it out like we all have none of us know the fucking answers Mm -hmm. not a damn single one a lot of people claim to but i don't know do you remember right before you were born do you remember what you were thinking about i don't i can't remember what i was fucking dreaming about last night as soon as i wake up i forget it inception right also we ignore dreams dreams are we don't ignore dreams but like the average person unless you like that's a thing you do is study dreams Mm -hmm. holy shit bro eight hours of your 24 hour day like so much of your time is spent in a place that you literally don't know or think about ever you just do it you wake up and you continue doing what you're doing and someone's like what did you dream about and you're like oh it was crazy it was blah 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 and then you move on with your life and you don't dissect it or like look at what your subconscious mind is telling you or the craziest 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 shit though that happens to so many people is the feeling of like i remember there was one time where I was dating this chick in high school and we had just broken up and um, I, st- I still like really cared for her really like she was super cool we just didn't work out whatever like I had a super 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 vivid dream of me driving in a car with her and we got in a car accident and she died Ooh. right next to me Damn. and I was like I looked over and she was like dead and I felt what it felt like to lose her and when i woke up i literally felt like that agony and i was like crying and i was like what the fuck like mm-hmm. that was a dream right like i fe- like i i literally felt that and everything right. felt real like you couldn't tell me that wasn't real because in my head it like was clear as day you know right. and I, I think it's weird to like what? Like what was that trying to say? Do you th- like it? Like it's like, like is, is it? Was it trying to say something? Like why did that specific one stand out to you? Yeah. Like like why wasn't that another one of the millions of dreams that you forget every night? Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's so interesting. And I mean, I, I bet you there's people that have studied it and probably actually know quite a bit about dreams. Yeah. I just, I just and which don't. would be such a cool podcast if you had someone on there. Oh fuck, listener! Um, if you study dreams. Please email me at junkyardlovejake at gmail dot com. <laughs> yes, please, because I am. I'm Dream gonna. Life. I'm gonna be sitting right over there, just like staring You're at Jamie you guys. for this episode. Yeah, You're dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever um, experienced or tried or any of that um, lucid dreaming? I. Or sleep paralysis. We could talk about too. I've done. I've had only one instance of sleep paralysis. Lucid dreaming. I've not. Not really too fond of it. Um, Dreams within dreams, ish. Uh, well, like deep dreaming. N- well, Control l- dreaming. lucid dreaming is as you're dreaming, like your regular night. You you are able to awaken from the dream, as in you notice that you're dreaming, and then you kind of have actually some sort of free will is a strange word to use in the situation, but you have some sort of allocation to what you can do. You can be mm. like, oh, okay, like so, like some people literally uh, like like study or like go. Um, um, like like they do what they want. Like I think it's still kind of like a fantasy side of your brain. Um, but like people, it's people fly around. By you. Yeah, yeah. You're able to control. So you literally notice that you're in a dream. So what people to do? Um, so like, I'm, I lightly look into it. I'm not like in depth into it, and I haven't done it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do kind of some of the things. Like so, there's a thing called reality check, which sounds intense, but it's essentially like as you're going about your day. Like if you think about it, it pops in your mind, just like look at your hand and be like, is this reality? Yep, it's reality. Like in, in that sounds strange, right? But, but what happens is, is you do that enough, your subconscious starts formulating these things. And then when you really ask yourself, not just like a habitual thing, but you're like, fuck, like literally look around, smell, taste, hear, whatever. Like, do you see your nose at the bottom of your vision? These sort of things. Mm-hmm. Like do, um, and if you do that in a dream, because you've trained your subconscious mind to do such, you, you're actually be like, oh it's not oh shit this is a dream and so if you can chill yourself on excitement and like you don't instantly wake up out of that Mm -hmm. um you're able to apparently walk around fly around control your dreams and this is a it's literally i'm I'm telling you this is like you can look on reddit and there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who do this um that that was an exaggeration of the number i don't know but (laughs) um it's literally they have protocols within the government like there's cia documents fbi documents i've glazed through the the cia ones mm-hmm. uh and they literally talk about how they they have studies on lucid dreaming and they had like i don't know if it was like fucking agents in the lucid dreaming world or what mm-hmm. but super weird right but anyway so you can awaken 
from a dream and then control whatever you may. Like, that's something what is that is the possible. Significance of that. You know? Well, so so I think if you think of humans outside of like our lineage of humans, mm-hmm. like if you think of like different civilizations that we have proof that were like just decimated by you know global catastrophes, um, asteroids, and like clearing clearing the earth. I was talking about like how history is different. Um, if you look at different like let's say psycho technologies, like we have we have the five senses and we use science like science is kind of like our god of sorts Mm. but if they have uh like 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 back then there's a lot of different civilizations and even in our lineage that lived in the dream world like so shamans for example um the shaman character in civilizations like you know the person who writes on the wall in the caves and the the person who explores the not only the dream world but like the consciousness world and he Mm -hmm. comes back and he teaches the the people the physical world so um the uh um shoot i lost it i'm losing the thread uh lucid dreaming lucid dreaming um yeah so 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 uh, essentially it's not it's abnormal to us especially in the western world right Mm -hmm. lucid dreaming but lineages like all like a lot of old stories like when you read about shamans um this is the story that you hear a lot is like they're um, i think i think this is broad generalization again a lot i think a lot of the indian um people like people who like grew up in more forests like mm-hmm. less civilization and condensed together i believe that they probably like talked to like let's say their gods in the in the spirit spirit world it could have been like during lucid dreaming like it could have been for all we know as like as much as you and i as we're talking and we're like what that's crazy you can control your dreams Mm -hmm. like imagine there could have been a civilization of people who are talking in their language and they're like wait you can't control your dreams what the fuck are you what do you do for eight hours a night you idiot Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like that's how different things could be um and and uh yeah, sorry. I think I floated off topic. No, with what a, we no were, that's, I seem to be losing the thread a little bit. <laughs> that's okay. It's it's lucid dreaming. It's dreaming. Yeah. It's like right a a, a world unknown. Honestly, mm-hmm. it's and what I think is very odd is that um, within those communities, like you were saying, like people who are indigenous and sort of out there um, and have those kind of traditions of lucid dreaming or having breathing exercises where they hallucinate together as mm. as a group or, you know, things like that. It seems so odd to me that those are very... If you've ever been a part of one, you'd know how spiritually enlightening it is and how connected you can be to the people around you Mm -hmm. even if you have no idea who they are like i did a simple simple um gosh what was uh kundalini yoga class Mm. where it's like deep heavy super fast Mm. uh yoga breathing breath work and it gets you lightheaded it gets you all this stuff um but it also puts you in this crazy, crazy mindset of I having it, extreme amounts of oxygen pushed into your muscles and you feel like extremely alive mm. and you feel your senses extremely heightened. And then we started doing the ohm together as a mm. class of like 30 people, like all ohming at once. And I shit you not, you sink in. Oh. with everyone on one common sound wow that is just an amazing vibration w- and would you experience what do you mean what do you mean sink in like what was how is this a, a different form of consciousness than normal yeah it's it's it was a unified consciousness it was it was like a uh a soccer team that is going down the field and they seem like they are kicking the ball to each other with purpose Mm -hmm. and intent and they they're all on the same page Mm -hmm. like if one kicks the ball like and it looks like it's going nowhere you'll just see someone running out of nowhere and just like 
holy I'm shit. I'm reading what he, you're doing. Yeah, how did he see that? And they were both on the same wavelength. Just like wavelength. musicians on a stage, man, exactly. band working together. Just, just like that. It yeah. felt We've like learned a that. common language we can communicate in real time in front of other people who don't know that common language. It, it And it was, it wasn't anything, that's what's so weird about it. It, it was a sound that connected yourself to everyone around you and created a pattern of vibrations it sounds so crazy and it sounds so hard to to grasp right. and be like all right well what's the purpose of like sound vibrating people connecting with each right. other it's it's something that you cannot just be like you can't just explain to someone you have to feel it and that's for those people that are skeptical and being like well i don't really care about connecting mm -hmm. with people and all that stuff you don't know right if you have not tried it you don't know what it feels like and you don't know what you're missing out on and who knows maybe you don't want it right maybe you don't but you will feel more connected to people you will feel feel you'll feel more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you'll have more emotion I just, you know, I, I'm such a why not person. I'm like, I mm -hmm. want to discover like, you know, uh, like I, I want to experience like whatever, like I'm here for a fickle amount of time. Mm -hmm. Like why, like if I choose who I am, then I don't get to experience all these wonderful, beautiful things. Like, exactly. like if I have someone who I enjoy hanging out with, who I enjoy spending time with, who um, I, you know, I, I, I can trust and, and I trust their opinion and they're like, do this breathing, ohm exercise. It's just super crazy, like whatever. Mm -hmm. Like they're not trying to say like, you need to believe this because it's the truth. Like mm -hmm. I feel like we get caught up so much with trying to like, Prove like well, that's wrong. not truth. That's not really, you know, like what? Like what? Why not just as you're here on earth, choose with your own stomach to just experience to experience whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I tried to, uh, um, how I overcame, I've, I had a strange fear of water that was kind of bumming me out. Um, and I really wanted to wakeboard. Um, and last summer I had this, like, I kept like trying to build myself up cause I would think about wakeboarding before the trip I'd think about it. And I'm like, fuck, I really want to do that. I really want to do that. So I tried to move from this, from, from being the person who's in the boat wishing that he was doing it. So, but I tried, so I tried to move from that into like, like what would make me want to just do it? And I just kept thinking like that. And then, so finally we get into the boat and it's like, Jake, you want to try? And I had this instant, like, hell yeah. Hell yes, mm -hmm. I do. And I did, and I did it. And, and I, and I loved it. And, and, and the thing is the thought that I had accidentally like provided myself with was what do you want to have had experienced at the end mm -hmm. of your life? And like you, you can insert these things and, and they lead you to, you know, going, going into doors that you never tried before, you know, like don't, don't just blindly follow a bunch of shit because you want to try everything, you know, use your intellect. Mm -hmm. But, but I think like exploring, all of these things is like really where life is at. Um, and I also think that a good uh, relation to like what you're talking about when everybody's kind of like one consciousness, one kind of vibe, we're all just home. Mm -hmm. What happens, we, we shut down our default mode network, like our, our typical reactions, our typical yeah. thoughts, our, our thoughts that we always, that we don't even realize that we're thinking. Our egoic thoughts. You know? Yeah, right, our, our, our loops, our mm -hmm. constant just, our default mode network is, is shut down in, in those positions of sorts. Um, and and so you don't have thoughts about what you're doing. You're just doing. This mm -hmm. is kind of like, think back, Brandon, to the first time that you fell in love, like whether it was really love or not. When you're a kid, you're 15, you're 13, whatever. Um, and you're like, oh my gosh, I've never felt this for a person. Is this love? This is love. Whoa. What it was is you're present. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking of the future. You're not regretting the past. You're not thinking of what you need to wear to school tomorrow to impress mm -hmm. people because you ha you're you just present, you're laughing. You're not thinking about what you should say, you're just saying it. You are truly present for the first time. That's when you're experience experiencing love. So I think some of our most powerful moments that are, that, that can be attained as, as humans are when we shut up and get out of the way mm -hmm. and we just try and mm -hmm. we just, we, we try by choosing to let go in a sense. So, so, um, um, Christians and, and anytime I say Christians listeners is I'm just using it as a super broad example I'm not like I'm just trying to describe mm -hmm. people I'm generalizing and I'm so aware of that 
be aware of who I am. I'm a fucking DJ. But uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, 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 so so Christian. So like you know, um, we're doing Kundalini yoga and we're stretching our bodies. And if somebody walked by who's like a Christian, for example, they might look in the window and and the people are going oh and they're and you'd be like what the motherfuck. But like so, so think about prayer. A, a lot of like. Um, people in, in other religions when, when you're praying and there's everybody praying and you guys all kind of have connected to this like um the, the pastor has given his sermon he's given his his here's what we're kind of thinking about so every person in that room is kind of brought up to the same thought like we're, we're we're learning today about courage and individualism and and you know whatever like we're learning about this this amazing thought that feels good when you articulate it we're all getting together and we're connecting to the same feeling the vibe per se so when everybody has their eyes closed and they're praying like if you lock into it and you just say fuck dude let's try it let's use my imagination really yeah. yeah let's like you know just like when you were a kid when you used your imagination you pretend pretend not do i feel this innately do, does this magically just light up a thing in my chest no man pretend but just be like what would it feel like if I did, you know, experience like, okay, so they're saying this, like really just shut up, you know, just shut up and let yourself experience mm -hmm. whatever, you know, shut, shut down your, your constant train of thoughts. It brings you into the present moment. Um, and then later you can choose like, I, I want to take that forward or I believe that, or I don't believe that, or I'm yeah. going to do some more research or, but I think that as just a human, you know, a spiritual ape, a spiritual being riding around in an ape's body, we should we should allow ourselves to experience things, um, uh, you know, w without identifying with them. Yeah, like like just 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 try it out. So like the om thing, I think just it like, like you you tried it out and you're like, dude, it's it's something different. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Like it's it's awesome. It's whatever. I I, think, I, yeah. I definitely learned the experience of trying not only new things abstract things just trying things in general that like just don't even sound like me or something that i would do in my lifetime but have been presented to me because of the fact that i used to go hiking all the time still i haven't gone recently because winter Poor just dude. got over but uh back at it soon um but i would love like going hiking and then you just you know how you just kind of see like a like a nice like cliff face or like a boulder like a big boulder and you're like oh, i kind of want to climb that mm. you know there was one specifically i was hiking with my fiance and we were like down in this like little gorge area and i look up and there's just like this pride rock looking rock like rock that was like halfway up a mountain and but like the hike up to it it, it was like a free climb um and it just looked gorgeous from like i could imagine what it looked like from that view it was mm. just all open it was like whoa like you would get a crazy view if you saw it from up there and i remember thinking in life you can always look at you can always look at that mountain or you can look from that mountain mm. you'll never know what it is to look You'll always know what it is to look at it with uh, with question and excitement and, and a lack of understanding, but you'll never know what it's like to look from it if you don't go up and climb it and try it and mm -hmm. get there and understand and go, huh, the view is kind of shitty. Or, holy shit, I right. love this view. I never knew I could love yoga like this. Like This right. is the most amazing thing that I've ever felt. But there's something to be said about the work that you have to put in because if there was a helicopter in that situation that just came down, picked you up, put you on top of it, you'd be like, man, that's pretty nice. Yeah. But it's, like if you're like, oh, it's going to take me eight and a half hours, but yeah. you get to the top, it's different, right? You go, like you just lived the life, you lived the experience of getting to the top, not just got to the top. Mm -hmm. it, it, that, for some reason, has stuck in my head for yeah. so long. Like yeah. you can either look at it or you can look from it. Yeah, it just kept great. saying in my head, like you can look at it or you can look from it. And I like kept walking in that little gorge and I was like, Hey, can we turn around real quick? I want to climb that. And she was like, go climb it then. Like, I don't care. Yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. And I just like went and climbed it. And I was like, ah, that was so worth it. That was just 
How'd it look from there? It, it was <laughs> indescribable. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's indescribable. Yeah. Some of the yeah. things that that's why I love hiking so much. And yeah. like going on those jogs and everything like mm-hmm. that. We see some crazy, crazy, crazy views that are just, yeah. it takes you so far out from society and from your normal life. It seems so crazy that you can like wake up one day, go drive like four hours go hike this crazy insane mm-hmm. view landscape see a bear see whatever i don't want to see a bear i don't want to see a bear either but it's, you might i don't know be prepared but uh prepared yeah. bared prepared be prepared <laughs> <laughs> bad dad jokes but uh but yeah it's it's uh yeah it's you should go out and try it absolutely it's dude it's it's just try uh, new things just be like yes man do you think yes yes man yes and it's it, do things that uh i had a uh, rebecca wilde was on the podcast and she had this thing she's like oh i always say um uh take me to a place where i feel small and i was like oh that's savage i love that, that. is such an awesome yeah because awesome. like it's just a reminder like so so like on my run at the end of my run uh there's this big log that's from um uh, like 1917 or something and they have like a chunk of it that's cut out and they put like the like it was this this old at this year like they have like the markers on it Mm -hmm. it's like a on display as you come into our town um but on my runs i always walk and i or or i i always run and i hit it Mm -hmm. it's my it's my um like end like i hit it and i'm like okay and it's my insignificance like it reminds me because like a lot of times when i'm running i'll be like amping myself up like you're a savage you're a beast you got this Mm -hmm. you're a savage Mm -hmm. motherfucker like you're you got this like you know Mm -hmm. you're marathon runner you're whatever and then i get to the log and i'm like you're also insignificant (laughs) in in permanence you know and it's this old log. it just reminds me um this log will last forever and you will not right (laughs) like this was here before you and it's you aren't more important than it it's not how it works Mm -hmm. you know it's um but i think that having those you know it's kind of like like you know stoic sort of thinking and and, you know i guess maybe a little buddhism thinking Mm -hmm. like just feeling insignificant and not like getting so caught up and like you know because even like ascending a mountain and getting to the top there is an asset of like i did it Mm -hmm. i did this awesome but then there's also an aspect when you're at the top where you let go of the i and you're like fuck i don't know and this is amazing i don't know why it's just breathtaking. You just feel, you just get out of the way and, and allow that that situation, that view, like all of your eyesight from left and right and up in. and down, soaking in. Yeah. And it, but it, it's just so nuts that nine out of ten people will probably get to the top and immediately pull out their phone and take a picture of mm-hmm. what they've got as hopes that they will. I don't know if anyone even looks back at the pictures maybe they'll show them to friends like look at the hike i did this past weekend but right six years down the road are you still looking at that or do you more remember so the memory of you and your friend getting to the the top what about the smell you can't i mean the the memory is great i do a really weird thing i know it's pretty gross but i always most people don't know this at all I usually always get to the top of a mountain. I see a little piece of rock or dirt, and I grab it, and I touch it, and yeah. I touch my tongue. You taste it? Yeah. I taste it. Hell yeah. I like it's that. A very weird thing, but like, I'm like... Have you consciously thought about it? Like, or is it just kind of like, hmm, that's, I don't know. I Let's did it one time on accident, because I had my hand down, yeah. and I like oh. touched, and and some reason I was like trying to get something out of my mouth, and I was like, yeah. hmm, that's what the top tastes like, and I like did, I do that each time now. Right. Well, I feel that. I mean, I do a lot of weird shit myself. That That's I'm like, what it tastes like at the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers <laughs> don't know what it tastes like. Y'all don't know what it tastes yo, like at yo, the top. And now when we go to <laughs> make some dope beats and write some sh- some some shitty raps, mm-hmm. you can now say, you motherfuckers don't know what it tastes like at the I've been, top. I've, I don't eat the dirt at the top. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Brandon, uh, we've talked about eating dirt and consciousness mm-hmm. and being aliens and being organic bootloaders. And being conscious beings and being spiritual apes, and just kind of explored some thought experiments. Um, I thought it was a great conversation. I'm glad that you came over today. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that we were able to like talk about just the coronavirus and like 
um, also lead into like a regular talk because mm-hmm. it's something like, like I said, I'm, you know, I can't, you know, I am nervous about the coronavirus. I am, I don't know exactly what to do about this podcast. I mm-hmm. really want to keep going, but I want to make sure everybody's healthy and safe and I don't want to do the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just trying and thanks for letting me try and thanks for being here to bullshit with me. And also thanks for listening because I haven't hung out with a lot of humans, and so I'm just a talkative <laughs> Ted, bro. I'm just like, oh, I, I have I all these that. concepts that I've just I been like taking it. notes on the day. But um, yeah, it, it was a good time. Um, I appreciate it too, man. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have to do we'll have to do some more, and especially we, we can do some on Zoom po- Zoom podcasts, but especially just coming over to create because you're one of the um, listener. If if you're dying to get around people. Um, and I'm not the law and I think this is against the law. So keep that in mind, yeah. but maybe just, you know, please take care of your mental health. Like, like it's so serious, you know, mental health mm-hmm. is not something that's like a little side thing that you only deal with when you're feeling super fucking depressed and scared, like deal with it. Now, mm-hmm. if you're afraid of your mental health, if you're, if, if you're concerned with your lack of being around people, just please limit your contact but you know choose a couple people to be around Mm -hmm. choose a couple people to to fill your life with and and make sure you're valuing those conversations take extra precautions that sort of thing Mm -hmm. like look at look at our life and our health as full circle for yourself and for others and and go from there absolutely and if i have one piece of advice for this sort of coming to an end and you know hopefully it is coming to an end and kind of lifting um this is a new opportunity to become a better you uh we're we've all been secluded we've all been pushed into a corner of kind of a harsh situation and you don't know what mental struggles people are going through um this is a chance to be the nicest Mm. uh most uh just very very uh nice person i guess i don't yeah. even know what the word is to say right now but no, just just be just be nice man just, just, be, so just nice. be overly nice yeah. and and know that this is a time where you can enrich the community you can yeah. build relationships stronger than ever you can you can change the world for the better in a great way and also establish some very strong uh, attributes about yourself uh, keep drinking water keep working out keep drink that, that water baby drink that water Drink that water, take a big old deep belly breath and say, I love yourself. I love you. Have a great day every day. Just think to yourself, today I am, say it out loud too, today I'm going to have a great day. I believe I'm going to have a great day. Today will be a great day. Let's go pretend imagine see what it looks like we're gonna i, I feel like my podcast is gonna turn like so much positive content right at the very end <laughs> yeah. where it's just like no you hang up no, <laughs> yeah. you hang up i love it though because i i like the guests are always like yeah i do want to say this like a little encouraging mm-hmm. thing i love it so good well i like how you start off with it but yeah i'll let you right. I'll let you ride out <laughs> <laughs> all right bro i appreciate you listeners have a good rest of your day peace out listeners take a look around look at your surroundings just be aware make sure you're not mindlessly consuming too much content even if it's my content i'd rather have people living fulfilled lives than just consuming my shit so i hope this stuff helps if you don't mind if you have a second just uh after you get present of course like share subscribe send to a friend if you did like it um send a clip post a clip whatever you like Get the word out. Take care of yourself.